Welcome to Appaloosa, More Than Just a Color Breed, a podcast dedicated to showing the world the versatility and adaptability of the Appaloosa horse, as well as the people devoted to preserving and enhancing this outstanding breed. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for joining me at the only podcast that talks about the Appaloosa horse and the people that own them. This is episode number 31. I am your host, Tony Bottoms. This episode, I'm going to give you some new check-in procedures for the Appaloosa World Horse Show, which I hope you're going to. Hey, maybe you're actually listening to this on the way to the show, right? After that, I'm going to give you an update on one of the committee meeting minutes. And then after that, I'm going to give you an update on last episode when I talked about the PTHA accepting characteristic Appaloosas. I got a lot of feedback from that, so I want to share some of that with you. And then after that, I've gone through all the board of directors' motions from the beginning of the year till now. What I want to do with that is I want to bring you up to speed. That way you know what kind of rule changes are about to come down or whatever else they decide. Let's go ahead and get on with the show. If you haven't heard, there's some new check-in procedures for the 2019 World Championship Appaloosa Show, and this comes straight from the APHC website. If you'd like that link, you can go to appaloosamedia.libsyn, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N, dot com, or you can go to the Appaloosa website itself. So what it says is, to combat the spread of infectious equine disease, the Appaloosa Horse Club, in cooperation with the Texas Animal Health Commission, and the Will Rogers Memorial Center have implemented new check-in requirements for horses attending the World Show. Penalties for violation of requirements may include mandatory quarantine of all horses transported together, inability to show at the APHC World Show and or USCHA cutting and forfeiture of all related fees. Please read carefully. Upon arrival at the Will Rogers Memorial Center, Do not unload livestock until you receive an unloading permit at the stall office. All horses on the grounds, whether entered or not, and no matter their origin, this includes horses from Texas, must present proof of negative Coggins test dated on or after 10-25-18 and 30-day health certificates dated on or after 9-25-19 prior to unloading the animals. As always, use the horse's registered name on the health and Coggins documents in order to positively identify the horses. Horses originating in states where there are current cases of vesicular stomatitis, currently Colorado, Wyoming, and Nebraska, must have a health certificate issued within 14 days of arrival at the grounds. New check-in procedure. Bring the health and Coggins papers for each horse on your trailer to the stall office. Personnel will check your paperwork and give you an unloading permit for each horse on the trailer. This includes all horses, whether or not they are officially entered in the show. Do not unload any livestock until you receive the unloading permit for every horse you are transporting in that load. After you've unloaded horses for which you received an unloading permit, Take the unloading permit and the horse's original certificate of registration to the show office to receive your show packet, which includes your back numbers for the horses. Packets will not be released without this document. No exceptions. The stall office opens at 7.30 a.m. on Wednesday, October 23rd, and will be open 24 hours daily thereafter. The show office opens at 8 a.m. on Thursday, October 24th, and will be open till 6 p.m. that day, and will open at 7 a.m. daily thereafter. Inspection Station. Once you've received your show packet, take your horse, the horse's original certificate of registration, and the show packet to the inspection station located in the Burnett Building. Inspectors will identify your horses using their certificate of registration and stamp your back numbers indicating they're eligible to show. The inspection station is open Thursday, October 24th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and daily thereafter from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. All inspections must be performed during these hours to avoid additional after-hours inspection fees. 
Please be responsible equine industry stewards and adhere to these guidelines for the safety and well-being of all those in attendance at the show. So it sounds like you either want to get there early or maybe get there a little bit late because it sounds like they're going to have a little bit of a backup at the inspection station since you got to have your show packet and your horse and your registration to be able to get your back number stamped. And obviously, if you're in the show ring without a back number stamp, there's going to be some issues. And speaking of championships, the Appaloosa National Championship Endurance Ride, ANSWER, and the Appaloosa National Championship Competitive Trail Ride, ANCCTR, will be held near Venita, Oklahoma, October 25th through the 27th, 2019. This will be the first year for the championship competitive trail ride. The endurance ride will be held on Friday, October 25th, with a competitive trail ride being held on Saturday, October 26th. Riders from across the country are expected to attend. The Appaloosa Championship Distance Rides are held in conjunction with the Arabian Horse Association Distance Horse National Championship. Seven different breed associations will also be holding their national championships during this event. So if you get a chance, I know you're busy with World and all that, but hop over to the Appaloosa Distance Horse Facebook page and show the distance riders some love and kind of help cheer them on for this weekend. I know some of the people are going to be there or Kerry Lowry, which you've heard on this show, two-time distance championship horse and rider. Kim Rumsfa, which is one of our first interviews that we've ever done for this show, as well as Lucy Hess. Now, Lucy's not riding, but she's doing a really big part on helping out and bringing down the awards and all that kind of stuff. So like I said, Go over to the Facebook page and give them all a shout out and show them a little bit of love. So like I said on the last episode, I'm going to try to keep up with the different committee meeting minutes as they come up. And that's what we're getting ready to do. This is from the Regional Club and International Committee on October 14, 2009. The committee continued discussion of the following. Point fees. Lynette indicated the fees cover a variety of costs at the APHC main office. Request was made to provide members more transparent communications regarding where the money goes and how it is used. Regional clubs' engagement and involvement. From the September 16, 2019 meeting, a reiteration of the difficulty in engaging the regional clubs and generating more involvement was discussed. The club would benefit from new ideas to help build the clubs and strengthen the bond between the regional clubs and the APHC. Ideas discussed today. Create online resources in the regional club portal, including providing options for meetings such as teleconference, Zoom, chat rooms, Facebook groups, etc. Update resources on the regional club page at appaloosa.com providing current links to all important documents and information needed slash used by the regional clubs. This would also include step-by-step guidelines for APHC requirements for all events sponsored by the regional clubs to assist them in planning and complying with required components. Bring back regional club column in the journal to aid in regaining club participation. Discussion on a need for more personal outreach to the regional clubs to encourage their participation in showcasing their club and sharing that information. Discussion also included the possibility of a regional club newsletter option. Lynette will discuss possibilities with Dana and get back to the committee. Need to update brochures with accurate information and pricing. Lynette also indicated that the website is currently being worked on with an anticipated rollout January 1st, 2020, including making documents more easily accessible on the site. I received a lot of feedback from the last episode I did where I announced that PTHA, the Pinto Horse Association, is now accepting characteristic Appaloosas. For everybody who sent a Facebook message or an email or commented on the show directly. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. I do appreciate all the feedback. 
And the one thing that I did notice is that everybody who actually sat down to write one of those messages, whether it was a Facebook message or whether it was an email or commenting directly on the episode itself, all those were positive. The only negative feedback I got was from Facebook itself, on, on Facebook, on the posts on Facebook. And there were two major negatives that I kept hearing. One of them is Appaloosas aren't pinos or some variation thereof. You can't register an Appaloosa as a pinno. The second one was, this is going to kill the regional clubs. So I'm going to address the latter one first about this killing the regional clubs. I disagree. I don't think it's going to kill the regional clubs. If you have a strong regional club in your area already, I don't think this is going to really affect it a whole lot. If you don't have a strong regional club, sure, this might affect that regional club because that regional club's not doing what it's supposed to be doing and providing horse shows and providing an outlet for Appaloosa horse owners. If you have a strong club or if you don't have a strong club, my suggestion would be partner up with the PTHA regional club and do combined shows. If that show has a carded Appaloosa judge Those points will count towards world and for year end points. If it doesn't, then those points will count for a cap. So, either way, you're going to have points counting. It would be better if the regional clubs got together with the PTHA regional clubs and did combined shows. If you want to do your own show every once in a while, fine. But I think you would be better serving your members by helping share the expenses and the work and all that with somebody else who's willing to work with you. Just kind of makes sense to me. Now, going back to people saying, an Appaloosa is not a pinno. Well, I said this several times on Facebook. It is a show registry. It is not a breed registry. Then the pushback I would get from that would be, well, then they should change the wording. It's confusing. Using the word registry means you're registering a breed. And my response to that is, you're using the definition of the word registry in a very narrow sense. For example, most states, you have to register your car. You're not registering your car to be in the Ford breed or the Chevrolet breed. You're registering your car with the state that you live in so that you can drive. Do you see the correlation there? You're not registering your horse with the PTHA to say it's a pinno. You're registering your horse with the PTHA so that you can show. That's a more broad use of the word registry. Some people are like, well, you should nominate them, at such as NSBA. No, you nominate them because the stallion owner nominated their stallion and paid money to be in that fraternity or in that registration. It's still a registration, however you break it down. The word registration doesn't specifically mean breed. It's a word. There's many uses for the word registration. And I think those people who are saying, well, they need to change the wording, or you can't register your Appaloosa as a pinno. You're not registering them as a pinno. You're registering so that you're allowed to show. It's a show registry. No matter what, there's going to be people that view this as negative. From everything that I've seen, the majority of people are taking this as a positive. They're not taking it as a negative. A lot of people who do not have strong regional clubs are like, yay, a place to go show now. As I said last show, they already have four or five shows set up for this year or for next year, for 2020, right close around me. So. Hopefully that's the way it is for you also, is that you have some shows nearby you can go show at. So over the basically the better part of the last two weeks, I've been going over all the motions by the board of directors. 
that way I could pass on to you what's going on with rule changes and that kind of stuff. And I've learned a few things since I took this on. And right now I want to pass that on to you. The first thing that I learned was that if the board of directors pass a motion, that doesn't necessarily mean that motion is put into effect. Basically what has to happen is that motion has to be put in a journal and then you as a member have to have the opportunity to look it over and see what it says and be able to contact your board of directors and discuss it with them and all that kind of stuff. Then they come back later and they vote on it again to see if they all agree that the motion that they voted on before should actually go into effect because a lot of members might have contacted the board of directors and said, no, we don't want this. And so now that board of director may go back and say, no, we shouldn't do that. Now, the one caveat to that is if the board of directors invoke rule 70 and what rule 70 is, and I'll read this out of the rule book. The board of directors shall adopt, amend, and or eliminate a rule and or regulation only in the following manners. A, a motion proposing to adopt, amend, and or eliminate a rule and or regulation shall be approved, approval motion, or disapproved, disapproval motion, by the board of directors at a meeting, in parentheses, proposal meeting, conducted at least 90 days before a regular meeting of the Board of Directors. B, all approved motions and disapproved motions shall be published and distributed to the members within 60 days after the proposal meeting, along with notice of a regular meeting of the Board of Directors, in parentheses, the rule change meeting, to be conducted at least 90 days following the proposal meeting at which approval motions will be considered by the Board of Directors. One, Disapproved motions shall not be advanced for second hearing. C. Following such publication, distribution, and notice of members, the Board of Directors may adopt, amend, and or eliminate a rule and or regulation by adopting an approval motion at the rule change meeting. At such rule change meeting, the Board of Directors may also make related amendments to the approval motion. D. Notwithstanding the above, The Board of Directors may adopt, amend, and or eliminate a rule and or regulation at any meeting without following procedures set forth in this section, provided a separate motion be approved with written findings of fact specific to the rule and or regulation being adopted, amended, and or eliminated, and particularly describing how it was determined that the welfare and or orderly administration of the APHC will be better served without following the procedures set forth in this section. E. Changes to rules and regulations pertaining to registration, specifically rules 200 through 204, in parentheses, rules and regulations of registration, registration classification, regular number, registration requirements, non-characteristic, registration, bloodline requirements, in parentheses, must be approved by two-thirds majority vote of the APHC directors at a meeting at which a quorum is present. So if you remember last episode, I talked what constituted a quorum in the rules of the APHC, and they're trying to change that. It used to be one person could show up and that would be considered a quorum, and that's something that they're trying to change. So basically, this whole thing about they have to post it in the journal and give it 60 days, and then they have to come back and vote on it again, Well, that can be bypassed with the Section D of Rule 70 if they believe it's better for the welfare and or orderly administration of the APHC to be better served without following the procedures that we talked about before, then they can go ahead and implement that rule. There's one time that I saw that this was applied. Again, all the board members have to vote on it. So it's basically they vote on whatever the motion is. And then somebody tries to invoke Rule 70, and then they have to vote on it again. So I hope that's as clear as mud for you, right? (laughs) I definitely got an education with going through all this. 
So I'm going to try to lay these motions out in a way that I think will make it easier. Basically, I'm going to list the failed motions first. Then I'm going to list motions that were sent back to committee. Then I'm going to list the motions passed waiting for approval. So that means they have to go in a journal and wait the 60, 90 days, whatever it is. And then I will list the motions that have actually passed. So I hope that breaks it down a little bit better for you so you can understand, okay, well, this flew, but this didn't fly. This went back to committee, whatever. The first one we'll start with is the meeting on January 15, 2019. This is the meeting where all the new directors were sworn in. This is the meeting when the board of directors election and officers and executive committees are picked. You got your chair of rules committee, your chair of marketing and membership committee, chair of planning and review committee. And this is also the meeting where they elected the disciplinary committee and the executive committee. And that's pretty much all that happened in that meeting. The next one was on February 8th, 2019. And this is a failed motion. And it's BOD motion 010419 moves to rescind BOD motion 010219. And the reference of the 010219 moves to not exercise the option in the existing Fort Worth contract to extend the national show for an additional two years beginning in 2021 and further moves to delay until April 2019 regular meeting of the APHC Board of Directors, further discussion and selection of a suitable new venue for the national show beginning in 2021. So basically, they tried to rescind the APHC extending the contract. And you'll see once we get down here a little bit further where this comes into play. The board of directors decided they were not going to extend the contract with Fort Worth for the national show to go all the way out to 2021. And then they came back. Somebody wanted to come back and rescind that. They basically say, yes, we do want to stay in Fort Worth until 2021. Well, that one didn't pass. Obviously, I'm sure you know about that. There's been a lot of talk about nationals going to Indianapolis. Okay, the next meeting, this is motions that were sent back to committees. This was on August 15th, 2019. And the motion was to amend agenda to exclude item number seven and send the planning and review committee for further discussion before being brought to the full board. Number seven, a motion to amend the terms of APHC Director Code of Conduct and oath of office. We talked about this last show. They're trying to change the code of conduct and all that. What they're saying is they're sending this back to committee. It's not going up for a vote. Okay, motions that have passed but are waiting for approval. Again, we'll go back to January 15, 2019. BOD motion 010119. In addition to the regular spring 2000 meeting, of the 2019 APHC Board of Directors to be conducted in Moscow, Idaho on April 8th and 9th, 2019, and the regular meeting of the 2019 APHC Board of Directors to be conducted by teleconference during July through December, as required under Section 4, Article 4 of the APHC bylaws, the date and time of which shall be set by the APHC Executive Committee. The APHC Board of Directors moves to hold two additional regular meetings of the APHC Board of Directors in calendar year 2019 to be conducted by teleconference, the dates and times which will be set by the APHC Executive Committee. So basically, they voted to add a couple more meetings throughout the year. The next meeting was held on April 8th, 2019. BOD Motion 020419 to pursue contract negotiations with Oklahoma City to host the 2021 APHC National Show. Again, this is stuff that's passed, but it's waiting for approval. BOD Motion 040419 accepts Hall of Fame committee recommendation and moves to induct C. Almost Blonde, Gay Bar Silver, I'm a Joe's Doll, She's a Fancy Zippo, and Zipperific into the APHC Hall of Fame for Horses. BOD motion 050419 accepts Hall of Fame committee recommendation and moves to induct 
Randy Yoakum into the APHC Hall of Fame for People, BOD Motion 060419, accepts Breeders Sales SSA Committee recommendation and moves to phase out the Breeders Trust program beginning in 2020. BOD Motion 070419 accepts Rules Committee recommendation and moves to approve changes to Rule 420, Appaloosa Competitive All Breed Program, the ACAP program, as presented in Attachment A and to include program name change for rebranding purposes. Per BOD Motion 270417, this recommendation has been deemed by the APHC Executive Committee to be necessary and essential to the immediate welfare and orderly administration at APHC, its programs or policies. This is that Rule 70 being invoked, like I talked about earlier. Of course, they invoked it back in April 27th of 2017. Okay, so Attachment A. And if you want to get the full context of this, again, you all the show notes, you can go to appaloosamedia.libson.com and all the show notes are there. All the links are there. So I know me reading it to you sometimes makes it hard to understand, but if you go to that link, you can see it. So this is attachment A, changes to APHC rule 420 ACAP, adding the word point to all references of merits, as most people think in terms of points, not merits, adding working cow horse roping and cutting back to ACAP divisions and move walk trot to classes into their own category. Now I'm going to read what they're adding in or what the changes were. This is under rule G1. This is a new rule about year-end high merit point horses qualified for world show through the ACAP program. So you can actually qualify for world through the ACAP program. It's a little difficult, as you'll see, but you can do it. The ACAP year-end high merit point master horse, if they receive 15 ACAP merit points within a year, may be eligible to show in specific classes for the following year's APHC World Championship Show. All horses shown at the APHC World Championship Show must be APHC registered with regular or CPO registration class or have been issued performance permits in the qualifying year. See Part T of this rule for more explanation of which classes can be qualified for via this rule. Rule H. Horses registered in any other Appaloosa registry, either in the United States or any other country, are not eligible unless also registered with Appaloosa Horse Club, Inc. Rule I.1C. Changes made to fees for the program and eliminate the per-show fee. Number one, ACAP open horse enrollment fee is $40 for up to five ACAP award categories. A fee of $5 each will be assessed on each category enrolled in after the first five. Rule K. Number two, adds a late fee to results sent in after the 30-day deadline. Number two, late fees for results area, $10 per judge if results postmark between 31 and 45 days after the last day of the show. B, $25 per judge postmark. 46 days after the show. C. Results will not be accepted if postmarked more than 150 days after the last day of the show. D. All the year's results must be in the APHC office by December 31st of the year competing. E. Merits will not be awarded until late fees are paid in full. Rule R. Inclusive adds production awards to the program that reflect what is available to those showing APHC breed horses. R. Production awards. Production records will be kept on any breed of horse that appears on the approved list by the APHC to produce an Appaloosa. 1. ACAP Performance Dam. A certified APHC Performance Dam will be awarded when three of a mayor's produce have earned an ACAP Versatility Champion Award. 2. ACAP Performance Sire. A certified for ACAP Performance Sire will be awarded when eight of a stallion's get have earned an APHC Versatility Champion Award. Rule T adds a way to qualify horses for the world show through ACAP in classes many APHC shows are not readily available to offer. T. Qualifying for the APHC World Championship Show through ACAP points. 
One, in the following ACAP award merits, the ACAP year-end high merit point master horse for the year, if they receive 15 ACAP merit points within that year, will be eligible to show in specific classes for the following year's APHC World Championship show. All horses shown at the APHC World Championship show must be APHC registered with regular number or CPO registration classification or have been issued a performance permit in the qualifying year. To be clear, the only year-end high merit point winner in each category will qualify for the next year's APHC World Championship show, i.e., 2019 winner qualifies for the 2020 World Championship show. Two, in the following ACAP award categories only, the ACAP horse, if they receive 25 ACAP merit points within a year, will be eligible to show in specific classes for the following year's APHC World Championship show, i.e., 2019 merit points will qualify for 2020 World Championship show. All horses shown in the APHC World Championship show must be APHC registered with regular number or CPO registration classification or have been issued a performance permit in the qualifying year. In designating these specific classes, the APHC has found that many APHC shows are not able to offer these classes due to lack of facilities and or readily available equipment or cattle. Working cow horse can qualify for all open and boxing world classes. Cutting, all open cutting classes. Roping, all open both team and tie down. Over fences, all open working hunter, hunter and jumping does not include hunter hack. And we'll go back up to the ACAP year in high merit point master horse for the year. It's kind of the same, but it's not. Barrel racing, they qualify for open campus prairie stump race and barrel racing. Cutting, all open. Driving, all open pleasure driving. English pleasure, all open English pleasure. Games, all open games, excluding open campus prairie stump race and barrel racing. Halter, any age group of mares, open or hunter in hand. Any age group of stallions, open or hunter in hand, any age group of geldings, open or hunter in hand, over fences, all open over fences classes, including hunter and hack, ranch classes, all open, reining, all open, roping, all open, both team and tie down, trail, all open, western pleasure, all open, western riding, all open, working cow horses, all open, and boxing. So there's a few more if you get the ACAP year-end high merit point master horse, but you can still qualify for world if you receive 25 ACAP merit points within the year. So they're kind of opening that up a little bit and allowing people who don't have strong regional clubs in their area or don't have classes that are offered in their area a way to qualify for world. Okay, moving on to the next one. BOD Motion 090419, except show trail committee recommendations in SC Motion 030319 and moves that beginning with the 2020 National Show and the Youth World Show, points will be awarded under each judge in each class and also for the overall composite placing in each class. Additionally, additionally, National Show champions will be automatically qualified to compete in that class at the World Show in the same year. Points from the National Show will continue to count towards year-end and lifetime awards, but will not count towards World Show point qualifications, but will not count towards World Show point qualification or territory high point year-end awards, and to incorporate and approve related rule changes in this motion at the next meeting of the APHC Board of Directors. This motion will appear as an approval motion during the September 2019 meeting of the APHC BOD. BOD Motion 100419. The 2019 APHC Board of Directors accepts show trail committee recommendations in SC Motion 030319 
and moves to exercise a two-year contract extension option in the current contract with Will Rogers Memorial Center to host the World Championship Show and to pursue extensions to that contract. The next meeting was held on 4-29-19, BOD Motion 04-18-19. The 2019 APHC Board of Directors moves to rescind BOD Motion 01-02-19 and 02-04-19 and to collectively discuss the circumstances and reconsider such decisions regarding relocating the National and the Youth World Show beginning in 2021. Reference, the BOD Motion 010219 moves to not exercise the option in the existing Fort Worth contract to extend the National Show for the additional two years beginning in 2021 and further moves to delay until April 2019 regular meeting of the APHC Board of Directors further discussion and selection of a suitable new venue for the national show beginning in 2021. Reference BOD Motion 020419. The 2019 APHC Board of Directors moves to pursue contract negotiations with Oklahoma City to host the 2021 APHC national show. So basically, they're voting to rescind both of those. BOD Motion 041919. The 2019 APHC Board of Directors moves the table for a minimum of 60 days. Any further discussion in regard to relocating the national show and the youth world show to provide APHC directors the opportunity to 1. Seek individual legal counsel. 2. Intensively review and analyze data and financial projections presented during the April BOD meeting by staff and show site committee related to holding the shows at venues under consideration. Three, discuss findings before voting on relocation. Next meeting was 07-15-2019. BOD motion 0107. The 2019 APHC Board of Directors moves to enter into contract with the Indiana State Commission for the use of the equine facilities at the Indiana State Fairgrounds in Indianapolis, Indiana, an event center as host site for 2021, 2022, and 2023 National Appaloosa Show and Youth World Show. September 26, 2019, General Board Meeting Agenda. BOD Motion 020719. The 2019 APHC Board of Directors moves to appoint Lynette Thompson as interim CEO of the Appaloosa Horse Club. BOD Motion 030419 to approve the summary of motions from September 2018, November 2018, and January 2019 as printed in the Appaloosa Journal. This is what I was talking about. They go back, they approve motions, but it has to go in the journal, it has to be reviewed by the members. And then the BOD comes back and votes on it again. So this is them going back and voting on whether to accept the motions that were passed in September of 2018, November 2018, and January 2019. So keep in mind, all these have already been voted on, and basically they are being finalized. And also going back to the two motions I talked to before about nationals and youth going to any and appointing Lynette Thompson as interim CEO. Both those have been approved. BOD Motion 010918 accepts show committee recommendation 070818 and moves to add ranch reigning, junior, senior, non-pro, and youth non-qualifying classes to the 2019 National Appaloosa Show, 2019 World Championship Appaloosa Youth Show, and the 2019 World Championship Appaloosa Show. So as we talked about last episode, that they added ranch reigning to the World Show. It was also nationals. Accept show committee recommendation 090818 and moves to discontinue the breed of choice payout incentive program due to lack of participation effective 2019. BOD motion 040918 to eliminate the open broodmare class and maintain all other halter classes at the 2019 National Appaloosa Show. BOD motion 080918 
to direct the show committee to create requirements for new non-pro lifetime achievement award and to report back to the board of directors in a timely manner. BOD motion 090918 moves to approve APHC staff recommendations for proposed budget cuts in satisfaction of the 3% budget cut directive approved by the board of directors on August 15, 2018. BOD 100918 to direct APHC staff to keep looking for more ways and means to reduce expenditures. BOD motion 110918 accepts finance committee recommendation 010718 and moves to conduct an official audit for every physical year ending in an odd number and an official review for every physical year ending in an even number, effective immediately, intent to reduce expenses. BOD motion 120918, the Rules Committee recommended necessary revisions, if any, to APHC rules to accommodate the changes arising from adoption of BOD motion 110918. That was the one that we just did. Basically, what they're saying on that one is, if there's some rule that says that they have to have an audit every year, then they're going to go in and change that rule so that they can have an audit every other year and have an official review every other year. BOD 091318 accepts Finance Committee Recommendation 020818 and moves to collect a handling fee to process credit card payments beginning January 1, 2019 or before if possible. BOD Motion 091518 modifies Finance Committee recommendation for foundation breed designation of $50 and moves to retain a current fee of $30. So basically, in a way, that was kind of a failure because they were wanting to raise that fee to $50, but they said, no, we're going to keep it at $30. BOD Motion 091618 accepts Finance Committee recommendation 010918 setting forth the attached proposed fee structures and moves to implement the attached proposed fee structures to take effect January 1st, 2019. BOD Motion 091718 accepts Trail Committee Recommendation 010818 and moves to hold an Appaloosa National Championship competitive trail ride in 2019 in conjunction with the current Appaloosa National Championship endurance ride, which I talked about that earlier. In the show, this show, that's going on this weekend. BOD Motion 011118 moves to disapprove any fee increases for performance permits. A. Full date to 24 months full date. Appaloosa to Appaloosa such that it will remain at the current fee of $50. And B. After 24 months full date. Appaloosa at Appaloosa such that it will remain at the current fee of $75. BOD Motion 021118 approve a fee change for performance permit after 24 months from full date. Appaloosa to approve breed from $200 to $250 to be effective starting January 1st, 2019. BOD Motion 031118, approve a fee change for lifetime memberships from $750 to $650. They're dropping that one. To be effective starting January 1, 2019. BOD Motion 041118, approve a fee change for annual family memberships from $140 to $130. To be effective January 1, 2019. BOD Motion 051118, Approve a fee change for registration fee after 24 months full date and thereafter from 175 to 160 to be effective starting January 1st, 2019. BOD 051118. Approve a fee change for registration fee after 24 month full date and thereafter from $160 to $170 to be effective starting January 1st, 2019. BOD Motion 061118, approve a fee change for registration fee, hardship gelding spade mare from $160 to $175 to be effective starting January 1st, 2019. Now, I will say that I'm pretty sure that these fee changes did not go into effect in 2019. I believe that they're supposed to go into effect in 2020. BOD Motion 071118, 
disapprove any fee for foundation pedigree designation FPD such that it will remain at the current fee of $30. BOD motion 081118 to disapprove any fee increase for general advancement program GAP such that it will remain at the current fee of $30. BOD motion 091118 to disapprove any fee increase for registration fee fold date to six month fold date such that it will remain at $30 in 2019 and to approve a fee change to $40 beginning January 1st, 2020. BOD motion 10-09-18 to disapprove any increase for registration fee after six-month fold date to 12 months, such that it will remain at $65 for 2019 and approve fee changes to $75 beginning January 1st, 2020. And that is it. I know that this can be kind of dry, can kind of make your eyes cross, make you want to fall asleep. <laughs> but, you know, reading through this stuff and hopefully me giving you some of the information will get you up to date on what's going on with the BOD. Like I said, all this stuff that I read the last couple of minutes, starting with the September 26, 2019 general board meeting agenda, this, all this was on the agenda and it was supposed to have been approved. Now, there was some stuff on the agenda that I was told got sent back to committee. One of them was about more than two people being able to lease a horse and taking it to World and Nationals. I was told that went back to committee. I don't know if that's true because the minutes from that meeting have not been posted yet. The only thing that's up on the website are the approved agenda. So. If that's true or not, I, I assume that it's true. I don't know why that person would not tell me the truth. But like I said, we're all caught up now for everything that is on the website for this year. So as things come up, I will keep you abreast of that. And until next time, happy trails. As always, everything for the show will be in the show notes. And if you like what you heard, please go subscribe. We are pretty much any place that you can get music online. Pandora, iHeartRadio, Radio FM, any of those places you go to, Google Podcasts, you can subscribe to the show. If you do that, you'll make sure that you'll never miss an episode. Don't rely on social media to let you know when there's an episode. We all know what they're doing with the algorithms with social media. And then go tell a friend about the show. If you like what you heard and you think it's a good thing, go tell a friend. Share the show with a friend. Better yet, show a friend how to subscribe to the show. Until next time, happy trails.